Welcome to Geek's Corner. I'm Mr. Naps. I'm Katie. Pablo Picasso would carry a gun loaded with blanks that he would fire at people who would ask about the meaning of his art. What? Oh, that's wild and I love it. <laughs> that's good. And I'm Cameron. Oh my gosh, do you also carry a gun filled with blanks? When no, people... but you know what I do carry? Hashtags. These with hashtags at Geek's Corner. Talk at us tonight with the hashtag Geek's Corner on Twitter and we might talk back. Blank, blank. And while you're at it, welcome with us, Doug Marsh, who's a longtime friend of mine. <laughs> I'm going to call you a Disney historian, because I think that's fair. Okay. Disney <laughs> fan. Oh, oh yes, definitely. Yes. Um, I would say you're you're a good analyst of what's going on in the Walt Disney Company. Mm. Through conversations we've said all around. Disney guru. That's oh, what we should call you. Guru's guru's <laughs> that's guru. what he was looking for. I just, I just thought I was here to bring an air of gravitas to this... <laughs> This august assembly. <laughs> have you seen the show? No, I was say, <laughs> goodness I, we, haven't, we don't have any gravy yeah. toss. Is what it, is this gravy toss we're doing? Yeah, How, it's like, make a mess. Is this, does this show? Does this show? Is this one of those steaming shows? One of those. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes. Yes. Okay. So Doug and I have known each other for a while. Yes. And uh, and we go back even further than when we knew each other, which story. is another story completely. <laughs> but uh, recently, Doug reached out to me, and, and he said, I've got a crazy idea. And I was like, <laughs> go on. We put ducks in pants. But after that... <laughs> So would that Little be hats. switching yeah. switching the coat for the pants? Is that yeah. what Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Anyway, Duck's what's pants. weird is yeah. when they did the pins for the Olympics, they put Donald Duck in swim trunks <laughs> without the shirt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's like, but the rest of the time he runs around with the shirt and no trunks. I don't get <laughs> it. It does not make well, sense. That, well, that, that's always my favorite, especially from the older cartoons. If Donald ever loses the shirt, he immediately covers himself. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, but that wasn't a problem before. Yeah. Right. I don't know. It doesn't he make makes sense. No sense. Well, anyway, anyway. I, I reached out with a crazy idea. Yes. And your crazy idea was? Uh, my crazy idea was to uh, actually do a blog. Uh, for years, people had said to me, oh, Doug, you should do a blog. And I said, nobody wants to hear what, I, you know, I'm, I'm Including I'm me. Right, right. Yeah. And, uh, but then I came up with an idea for one, which was, what else? 30 years ago in Disneyland. Uh, because I moved here 30 years ago, and I began relentlessly taking photographs. And so I thought, you know what? I will write a blog telling about my personal story. And what's great about it is it's not really even just only Disneyland. Like, you actually came to California mm -hmm. 30 years ago this month. Well, actually, it was the end of December. Close enough. But close <laughs> enough, close Same enough. thing. It's like the very end of December. Enough time to plant the flag is what we're saying. Yes. So yes. 30 years ago this month was the mm -hmm. beginning of the 35th anniversary at Disneyland. Right. Which is weird because that's one of my favorite childhood memories because of that parade that got the music stuck in your no head. Can resist that's the music. Yeah. That's the music of the party. I can still hear it from beforehand. And um, you want me to come closer? Oh, I'm getting out of the shot. So uh, let's give Maddie a round of applause. Maddie! Thank you, Maddie. Because she just showed up signals. tonight, and she I was like, hey, Maddie, I don't have any producers. Can you help me? And she's like, okay. And she has not been comfortable for the entire time she's been here, but she's so, doing a fantastic job. Give a job. giant thank you to her on Twitter. Uh, also, applaud from your homes. Uh, M-A-D-I-E is how you spell her name. Maddie yes. was one D. I'm very protective over her. Tell her she's wonderful. It's unrelated to the name. You just... Wouldn't it be like, ahoy, matey? <laughs> yeah. Um, exactly. Yes. So, uh, 35th anniversary, we had Party Gras then. We had this other really cool Sorry, thing. Sorry, back, what was that name called? Party Gras. Party Gras. Party Gras. Party Gras. You know, no one can resist the magic and the That's mystic beauty <laughs> of the Party Gras. The Party Gras. Is but what that I is not the best thing of the 35th. That's going to be hard to beat. Oh, talk about the armadillos. Let's start here. Oh, that's where you want to go first. I do. Okay, okay. Because the moment uh, you brought, this is one of my favorite what? childhood memories that I didn't know where it came from until talking with Doug. Let's, the armadillo. Let's and let's find out how good he is, though. I'm not. What that good. was their full official oh, name? These armadillos. I couldn't tell you because I didn't know it till I read your article. It was the extremely secret royal eternal fraternity of the armadillo. It's extremely secret. Can you, all, How did can you, you all say to me the extremely secret, secret royal, royal eternal royal fraternal fraternity. order of the armadillo? Of How course. do I join? And I just remember <laughs> How them. do you join? What are my dues? You'd see them either at the Disneyland ho Hotel by my memory or New Orleans Square. Oh, I don't recall a member of the hotel, but then I so, never went over to the hotel. See, we were staying at the Disney Vacation Land campground, 
Okay, I know that. Which was <laughs> run by the Disneyland Hotel. Right. <gasps> and the pool was not heated at the va Vacation Land campground, so you go right, to the right, hotel. Right. What does this have to do with armadillos? This well, is that, where I saw the armadillos for the right, first right, time. Right. Now, and do, they, they do, march around, and you hear, right. I don't remember the whole song, but I remember it ended with, bump, bump, and then they would all say armadillos. Armadillos! Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what a, what a, what a New Orleans crew for Mardi Gras is? Oh, yes, yes. A crew? Yeah. Yes. They were essentially, a Disneyland created their own crew, because oh. Mardi Gras was based on Mardi Gras. So they created a crew that marched around, and they had a big armadillo mascot look on the blog and you'll see the picture i love and, that and they had a little one on a skateboard that went along it was all jeweled and token <laughs> and i just found out it was created by jody of kevin and jody oh, really? so thank Very you cool. shout out to kevin cool and jody is that? right and and they are looking for a photo of the little armadillo if anyone has that photo send it to kevin and jody oh, and that's cool. in their eternal friendship hmm. and uh and they would yes they would march around and uh now the the party gras parade had like all mardi gras parades they had Coins, tokens, <laughs> doubloons, mm -hmm. yes. and beads they would throw. They did not require you to do anything unwholesome to get those. <laughs> no. They're party gras. No, All right, party gras. And then yes. later the lawyers told them, don't throw them into the crowd because, you You're know, you put somebody's, somebody's eye out. So they Chippa handed King. them out to kids along the curb. I'm so, pretty sure they were still throwing them when I was there. Okay, well, good. Yeah. But what we learned, those of us who were adults at that time, is stand behind a crowd of kids, and when the performers start to run over, put your hand in between their heads oh, yeah. and <laughs> try to make it look tiny. Yeah, <laughs> as small of a hand as okay. possible. But, Lisa, let's <laughs> work some face. I don't know why the child has to be. Yeah. Yes. Oh, he's, yes. he's absolutely cockney. <laughs> yes, but the other way you could get the doubloon was if you went to the armadillos, if you saw the armadillos, and you used the secret armadillo hand signal. I, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I the must what? have done this as a kid. I don't You had to have. You knew the hand okay, signal. Okay, so, well, I have the coin. <laughs> it's, it's, oh, you still have yours? Yeah, the purple oh, one. good right? for you, the doubloon. Yeah. Yes. Well, now, 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 30 years too late, you're all going to learn the secret armadillo so hand right. signal. No, Are you no, ready for I'm it? Now, hold your hand up just like this, uh, uh -huh. and then do this. <gasps> If you walked I up, do remember this. If you walked up to the armadillos and you did this, this they went would, home with us. They would, they would quietly, they would quietly call you over, reach into a bag, because it was and a secret, hand you a doubloon. It was secret. Be it was the extremely secret, because it's royal, extremely eternal, secret. fraternal order of the armadillos. And oh. of course, I oh, still yeah. have oh. one of the doubloons right here. It felt like a magic trick. Yes, yes, it was. Well, well, magic. It came out of the official. 35th anniversary well, Disneyland bag, also known as Trip and Mickey. As Mickey we Ham. discussed, yes, there is yes, magic of party yes, gras. There, so. there is the magic <laughs> of party gras. And this was the doubloon, the one that was supposed to be thrown to the crowd. And it has, as you can see, the three characters. Oh, oh my gracious. That. And then if you were really this special, is a party. Yeah. if you were really special, you got to join special. the <gasps> extremely oh. secret royal eternal. What? Fraternal Order of Armadillos. <laughs> there is their card. I was not that special. Right there. You were not that special. I was you not weren't. That special. You weren't good at keeping well, the extreme secrets. Apparently not. I don't know. Do 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 we want to do we want to do this? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So, well, he wasn't that special, but all of you are. <laughs> oh, because you can tonight, have a tonight, you have an opportunity to acquire your own doubloon oh. and official armadillo card. All you have to do is, is what is it you want them to do? They're going to send a picture of this on Twitter, at the Daps Magic Twitter that Maddie's on right now. At Daps underscore magic. Yes, with the hashtag DLand30. DLand30. Which is what the <laughs> blog, my, that's... My hashtag. Yes, that's Thank his you. hashtag. That's my hashtag. And, and when so, it gets old, it'll be hash browns. Anyway. <laughs> Because, you know, it gets aging. <laughs> All right. There we um, go. Can I, two things. Two yes. very important things. All right. One, I am... And we'll randomly draw the person that wins. I am unbelievably mad I'm not eligible for this prize. Yeah. So two, and this, this is probably the important one, whether or not you win tonight, I need your help. Because I need to discuss a film called A Goofy Movie. It relates. A Goofy Movie is a was for a long time an underground hit it was yes. beloved mm -hmm. but niche people did not know about it mm -hmm. until i would say maybe five six years ago there was this massive resurgence yes because people collectively realized they had this love for this thing to the point where disney responded by 
making many products and re-releasing things and really buying into the love of what people have expressed. They responded to the market. My point is this. Y'all, you have the power to bring the pillows back. <laughs> it can be done. It's true. And I need to go through. I might have video somewhere of oh, like a clip of the armadillos, and I think it's at the Disneyland Hotel. This is my favorite. Okay. This this it's, replaces it's awesome. at the Disneyland so Hotel. So much. My, I'm pretty sure Dad filmed it at the Ooh, Disneyland Hotel. Yeah. Oh, no, wow. it, it. Of all of the different musical groups I've seen through the years, it has to be in the top mm. three. Well, That's also amazing. what what was strange is that the, another thing that just profoundly just disappeared. One thing was strange. Well, yes, no, no. I'm, but another thing that just profoundly disappeared when I went online trying to get a little information about them, there was virtually nothing about mm. them other than mm. I will say this: these cards they turn up frequently on, shall we say, large online bidding sites. Mm -hmm. Yes. Although I didn't see any. Yeah. So they, they 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 do turn up from time to time, mm. but. Uh, but the armadillos, they're just, they're, they the, were there for a this season. This tickles so much of my favorite things. Like, <laughs> secret, totally nonsensical fraternal societies. Like, I, I'm a member of Eclampus Vitus simply secret. because I think it's the weirdest thing ever, and I love it. Mm -hmm. um, it makes a lot more sense when you think of us now, though, doesn't it? Like, yo, this was that. my childhood. Yeah, totally so, I want this to exist. Mm -hmm. I want it to so exist badly. right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh. So, uh, Dland30 is the, the hashtag. hashtag, and and ideally at the Daps Magic Twitter, and we will uh, pick at random a, uh, a winner in the next week and uh, send it out to you. And then ideally, if you'd also take a picture with these things and send to us, because then we can show yes, Doug who ended up that. with If there are like 50 or 60 random Cameron-based accounts that pop up in the near future... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, that's how it works. So, um, there were some other cool things that happened 30 years ago. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you no, can that's talk, it. That's the most important thing. If you thing. want, you can hit Party Croft. Just the hour Party a bit more. Uh, but what, one, one thing I did I did want to mention real quick. In the blog. The kickoff, too. Well, yeah, yeah, in the blog, uh, one of the things I mentioned in the blog was that there, there while, while Ronald Reagan was riding down the street, accompanied by his magical Secret Service agents, uh, there were actually, we spotted snipers up on the roofs. And people said to me, well, I don't see any snipers in, in your pictures. And I thought, well, of course there's, there's snipers in the pictures. I put this picture, and these are the actual photographs. I put this picture in the blog, and I should have put, right is this is this the best camera to hold this to? Which one do you want, Maddie? Right there. This yes. one? Right, okay. right, right there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Camera this is the picture. Yeah, this is, is the help? picture I used. But the picture I should have used. Thank you, Cameron. <laughs> but I didn't remember to do. The picture I should have used, and here, Cameron, you can hold this one, was this one because if you look up on the roof of the Emporium, yes, that is an actual honest-to-goodness Secret Service sniper up there on the roof of the Emporium. I need to see this, too. That's bananas. Yeah, that, that, is, that is, if you look closely, you will see him there. But, uh, oh, yeah. is there two of them? Hmm? Looks like there's two. There, I, there probably are. You know, one to handle the ammunition and the other one to. Uh, wow. Yeah. Uh, I also had some uh, some wonderful encounters. Be careful, um, Michael. See, uh, do I dare tell them? Yeah. Oh, quick, 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 quick. Uh, oh yes. <laughs> this was this was one of the the rare photographs that I actually took of myself. I'm not going to use this in the blog. Uh, so you get to see this it. is your you chance. You get to see it here. I will have a picture of him. And that is, of course, Alan Young, who was the voice of Scrooge McDuck, yeah. and better known as the owner of Mr. Ed. He was also the best friend of H.G. Wells in The Time Machine. That mm. is also true. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mr. Philby. But he'll always and, be Scrooge McDuck right, to me. Philby Sr. and Philby Jr. But I will tell you, just very quickly, one story that's going to be in next month's, and that is an encounter with this fellow. Ah. <laughs> there you go. And that, of course, is Mr. Michael D. Eisner, the... Uh, the uh, owner of the Walt Disney Company. Uh, just very quick, they had a, a big uh, machine in the middle of the park that would pop up out of the ground and had a car in it. So on January 11th, they dedicated the machine, and for the dedication, they had Michael Eisner and uh, a band, and they had uh, a big ceremony, and I hustled down there and managed to get right in the front of the crowd, and after they had gotten all of the footage and the photos and everything done, all of the people who were in charge left, leaving Michael Eisner standing there, 
and the whole crowd surged forward, <laughs> and I found myself standing like this with Michael Eisner, who, who immediately grinned and began shaking hands with people. Yes. No, no, who immediately scowled and began looking around. How do I get out of here? How do I get out of here? And then suddenly realized, oh, these are all the Disney people. And so, so yes, he began sort of smiling and turning to people and saying, hello, hello. And I, I said to him, because I had a pad of paper with me, I said, oh, Mr. Eisner, can I get oh, your cool. autograph? So this is this is really Michael Eisner's autograph. It's just kind of scroll. He was looking so grim by this time. So that was so six years in. Uh, about that, yeah. yeah, yeah, about that. And I, I, I said to him, you know, Mr. Eisner, nobody asks the CEO of Paramount for his autograph. And this did not go over with him <laughs> oh, at all. Follow up question. Because he came because from Paramount. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, that was, of course. And at about that point, a flying wedge of security came through the yeah. crowd. Parting the crowd, opened up, enveloped him, and l led him away. Did you ever so meet he him was again? Gone. Uh, yes, I did actually several times. Did he remember you? Uh, he didn't remember me from that day. Thank okay. goodness. <laughs> uh, the, the funniest one one time when uh, when when everyone was up in arms over the submarines because the submarines yeah. were you know, rotting away. Mm -hmm. and I was at some event and I, I did the, the quick interview with him, and then at the end of it I said, "Now about those Disneyland submarines." And he literally, he said, what about those submarines? And turned around and walked off. <laughs> and he was gone. <laughs> yes. What about those submarines? I <laughs> love that. Yes, that makes sense. Yes. yes. Um, talk about some other things that you remember that maybe didn't make it in the blog from January 1990 at Disneyland. What was it like? Well, uh, bear in mind, I had all my life I had worshipped Disneyland from afar, and now I finally could go there. I did get my annual passport. That was in March, uh, March 22nd of 1990, and it was the Disneyland seasonal passport, which is what I could afford at that time. And uh, the main thing I remember is that incessant song that played every time you were there. No one can resist uh -huh. the magic and the mystery. Yeah, it was an extreme. I actually song. don't remember most. I remember the logo in the was it a drum or something in the parade? I think you actually had a picture of it in the blog, mm -hmm. and um, I remember that, and I remember the song, and that's base, and the, I remember the dancers. And you don't remember the giant inflated? I remembered it once I saw the pictures, yeah. but before seeing the pictures, mm -hmm. I didn't remember those, mm -hmm. and like those just weren't the things that really. I mean, right. the music's what got yeah. stuck and, in my brain forever. And then, of course, the other big thing was the very next day, uh, January 12th, they had an enormous press conference at the Disneyland Hotel, and they announced the Disney Decade. That's right. <laughs> and we all remember 1990 was the Disney Decade. And uh, all of the amazing things that happened. Uh, Westcott Center got built. Mm -hmm. uh, the mm -hmm. Dick Tracy attraction got built. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. And, uh, you know, uh, Port Disney got built. Oh. And uh, all those amazing, incredible things that happened in 1990. Mm -hmm. uh, or in the 90s, uh, through the 90s. And then, in, and then in 2000, they just stopped and they didn't do anything after that. Disappeared. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes, they were gone. Yeah, they were never been heard of Disney again. That's right. So, um, how often, like, you went on the 11th. When was your next trip? Oh dear, I, I don't. I, at that time, Ish. I was still using um, um, multi-day passports that I still had days left on. Okay. Mm -hmm. But once I got this, I would say I was there about twice a week. Mm -hmm. Bear in mind, I was living in Pasadena at the time, so I got to know <laughs> the one ten and the five extremely <laughs> well. Oh, I'm sure. In fact, there were some nights I think. By the time I was driving home, the car was moving. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's like that scene in North by Northwest where they, you know, you know. I really think that's anybody who moved from out of town to Southern California and discovered mm -hmm. they can go to Disneyland as much as they want. We've all lived that story. Oh, absolutely. And, yeah. Um, so when you would go to Disneyland, obviously it's a little bit different looking than it is today. Mm hmm do you remember like what the feel was as you're walking through like how busy it was what the crowds were oh. like like kind of the 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 vibe of that oh time? yes yes well one of the first things that I, we quickly learned a lot of us annual pass holders learned was how to game the parking lot <laughs> and uh this the first is when thing, it still came right, right up to the right, gate. right it was yes. right up to the gates evade the friendly smiling parking lot hosts <laughs> because they're going to send you off somewhere where you know the rubes park uh, no, I had a favorite parking spot. It was near the great big uh, oleander hedge that surrounded the base of the power so pylon. What was that? They used to stand. 
Uh, I would say maybe it was right around Eeyore. Okay, that's what I was guessing yeah. in my head. Yeah. But, so, yeah. wait, yeah. I know that's where yes. Indy is now, right? Pretty much. Yes, yeah. yeah. it's okay. just uh, where, where uh, actually, I was uh, maybe a little bit further over because I know it was outside the uh, monorail. And but then the so were you the over side. where the tram used to cross to go over to Disneyland Hotel? Not that far over. Not that far. But, but uh, that direction. But uh, <laughs> I, as I wrote in the blog, the amazing thing to me was in 1990. Like, I don't know what any of this is. No, I roughly <laughs> do. You, you, you guys, Not by sure, surely, surely, you all know that there's an Eeyore sign. Yes. Yes. Up in yes. Indy, right. I have we seen know, it. We know, and don't call me right. what. Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, <laughs> the um, uh, the thing that amazed me is in 1990. I was able to drive right into the parking lot, scroll my way through the through the lot, run through the front gate, and get to Town Square in time to be like a hundred yards from the former president of the United States. Mm. Imagine such a thing today. Can yeah. you imagine how many layers of security there would be yeah. if they brought in a former president right now? Or how likely you would be to know that there was a former president there. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. No, but I mean if it was for an event. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, but I mean they would they would have started bringing people in in small groups four after they the had gone through yeah, yeah four in the morning but uh, you know in those days that that was the main thing i remember is you could you could race right in and also i loved 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 the evenings at disneyland because the pace slowed down mm -hmm. it was there were places where you could go where there was excitement you could go and you could swing dance at the plaza gardens or you could go over to tomorrowland terrace and where they were doing that rock and roll and ah, my, yes. my absolute favorite, though, was riding the Mark Twain Riverboat on oh, summer evenings. That was magical. It was so quiet. And you mm -hmm. left Disneyland, and you went out into the wilderness, and then you returned back to the quiet, beautiful, twinkling lights and gentle music of New Orleans Square. And that, of course, all went away the next year when Fantasmic was created. A fantastic <laughs> show, or a Fantasmic show, but that whole beautiful summer evening atmosphere vanished forever yeah that that was definitely a magical thing um what was your must-do thing you had to do in, in 1990 like when you went to disneyland did you have a certain routine of like oh like i gotta go on this attraction like no i really i i did something <clears throat> a little different every time okay. i uh, didn't have a, a very much of a set routine uh, as, as far as uh what I like, a lot of times people would ask me, what is your favorite attraction at Disneyland? It would depend on whether I had been on the Haunted Mansion or Pirates of the Caribbean last. Ah. Because it's one of those two, always for me. And it's just, it's next to impossible to choose. So I would always make sure that I did get to Haunted Mansion and Pirates of the Caribbean. Okay. But uh, other than that, uh, I did enjoy on the uh, weekends when they had swing dancing over at uh, Plaza Gardens. And in those days, the bands were bands that I knew. I was a big band fan in high school. Mm -hmm. so I've always liked things that are 40 years before my time. <laughs> and Or 30 years. I should say 30 years before my time. <laughs> Gotta promote. Keep... <laughs> yes, yes. But uh, they, they had like Tex Beneke uh, band which was performing. And Charlie Barnett's band, I believe, was performing. And, and that was always very exciting to see. And so that uh, I enjoyed that. Also, uh, they would have special events, and when they brought out Disney Legends, I mean, they brought out Disney Legends. Uh, I've been digging through uh, boxes and bins full of things, and I just recently pulled up something. I went to some event at the Disney Gallery with Dorothea Redmond, and I would not have even thought she was still alive, <laughs> but she was doing a signing of one of her lithographs, mm -hmm. and of course, you know, Mark Davis and Boyd Kimball, and uh, you know, all of the, the great people wow. who worked on the park and worked on the films. Wow. Those folks you see the names of on Main Street. Right? Yes. So, yes. So, yes. So give us a teaser of what we're going to get next. Well, next is going to be... 1991. <laughs> there you go. Well, no, that's next year. Yes. Yeah. Next year you that's get 1991. That's great about this series. It's literally 30 years ago today. Right. Like, right. And 30 years from now, when I'm 92, I'll be writing about <laughs> mm -hmm. what went on last night at Disneyland. Oh, gosh. So I hope all of you remember. Somebody's got to pick up the baton for me at some point. <laughs> uh, actually, it'll be part two of January 11th. I was going to write January 11th in one uh, epic blog post, and it just was it was running on and on and on, and can you imagine? And uh, so it, it will be the rest of the day, which will be a little more disjointed because we're going to finally leave Town Square and head up Main Street 
where where I found Fess Parker standing in the middle of the street with oh no one gosh. around. That's another thing. Can How you imagine if that? Fess Parker was just standing out in the middle of Main Street, USA, with a single cameraman on him and a person with a reflector, and <laughs> no one <laughs> was around? Yeah, no, it's... I have the photos to prove it, and I have the autograph. From I can't Fess wait Parker. to see that. Yeah. So uh, uh, any anyway, uh, seeing different people, um, and then uh, and then of course. A close encounter with Michael Eisner, but you can skip over that part if you watch the podcast tonight. Well, you know, <laughs> but they might want to read how you how you yes. write the full yes, details go. about it, and that's going to be fantastic. I can't wait to. We're going to have to have you back. Maybe we can do it monthly or something, and you can mm -hmm. you can talk mm -hmm. about more than your your blog too, because I think mm -hmm. there's so many different directions we can go with this. Um, oh, you just can't stop me. But <laughs> that's okay. But the clock will, and that's yes. that's how it always works. Um, so this has been a a weird week, I think, yes. for people in Southern, well, around the world, um, really. And uh, we were talking a little bit earlier, and I think anybody who's been to Disneyland for any extended period of time, at some point, ran into Kobe Bryant. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, constantly. Yes. And, like I was forgetting, we ran into him at one of the Sweetheart Disneyland Night. After Dark last year. Um, mm. I got run over by a security probably <laughs> ten years ago um, on Main Street. We were all in suits, and for some reason they thought I was part of the gang, and I just kind of got picked up and carried <laughs> along. And uh, it was because you just looked like you belonged. Yeah, with that I crowd. looked like I belonged in the clout crowd, and so I just kind of got <laughs> absorbed into player. it. Yeah, absolutely. And I didn't actually know who was in the middle of the crowd until I was up against him, and I looked up at him, and you kept looking. And up. that guy <laughs> yes. was massive, and and, and so. Um, <laughs> I think a lot of people have really fond memories of, of Kobe at Disneyland, mm -hmm. and and you said you had something that you oh didn't... this goes back to like I think two thousand seven two thousand eight. Uh, I was with my wife in the Disneyana shop, Aww. originally the Yale and Town Lock shop, and then today it is the little bookstore corner of Starbucks. But in those days, it was the Disneyana shop. One of the coolest stores. Oh, very cool store. Yeah. And uh, my wife had found something she wanted to purchase, and as we were getting, you know, around the shop, we started the store started filling up and filling up, and finally she said, "We better get over to the counter because it's going to take forever to get out of here with so many people shopping." So we're trying to get to the counter, and then we notice that cast members are helping people out. Uh, we need for you to leave. We need for you to leave. So my wife finally gets to the front of the counter, and a cast member comes to and says, "We need you to leave right now." And I said, "Well, my wife's making her purchase." Well, no, we need you to leave. I said, can she make her purchase? Someone says they can make their purchase. So they're making <laughs> the purchase, and I'm, right. you know, mm -hmm. and then it's like, okay, you can leave now. And I thought, well, by now the shop's empty except for a couple of people over shopping. And then as they take us out, I see the entire shop is surrounded by people, yeah. all their faces pressed against the glass, and they, they push us through the door. And as we get through the door, people are saying, so did you see him? What did he say to you? <laughs> and I said, see what? See who? They said, Kobe Bryant. He was standing right next to you. And of course, we were so busy trying to make our purchase, we did not notice, you know, Kobe. Anyway, Which was... is rather impressive because he was a tall guy. Right. Well, I was just, we wanted to make our purchase. <laughs> Very important things. Your priorities yeah. were correct. Um, <laughs> Suvies. That's yes. what we wanted. That And you, you have an amazing collection. Um, <laughs> you really do. Uh, so, as, as you think about all of 1990, <clears throat> we, as we pivot back to the end. I'm, I'm going to go down between the three of us. 1990, I was one. Let's see. So I um, want each of you, and Cameron, down. you get to go first, is ask the question that you would like to know from 1990 oh, ah. at Disneyland. Gotcha. Okay. I've got it. Um, at the beginning of 1990 was just the beginning of the resurgence of a lot of the big animation properties coming out. Um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, was there something intellectual property wise that Disney was making that you either saw an influence in the parks begin to take place or that you saw happening that you would not believe has sustained as long as it has? Uh, the, the one property that I thought was, was fascinating was, of all things, Dick Tracy. Mm -hmm. We were all really, really waiting on this because uh, Warren Beatty had been wanting to make this as a vanity project forever. And so Disney was very excited that they were going to release Dick Tracy, and we were going to get Dick Tracy's Diamond Double Cross on the stage of the Fantasyland Theater, mm. or Videopolis as it was known then. 
and uh, so uh, that uh, and then and then of course the next day they announced that they're going to have the Dick Tracy Crime Busters attraction would be coming to Walt Disney World and Disneyland, and uh, so that was something that we were we were all looking forward to. That didn't actually happen. It didn't. No. The, what have the, I been doing all this time? Yes. Men with the yellow jumpsuits have to come this way. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Oh, is your question. My, is it my question time? Uh -oh. So I know we just talked about Dick Tracy, but from everything else in the Disney decade, because I have my favorite, what was your favorite project that was announced but never came to be? Oh, well, Westcott. Thank you. That is the correct answer. <laughs> well, you know, today while I was digging through things, do you have the Westcott brochure? I absolutely do not have the Westcott brochure. Yeah, I've got four of them. Oh, but my anyway, gracious. Uh, so I'll have to bring them. <laughs> uh, no, uh... No, the uh, Westcott was amazing, or as I call it, the Amazing Shrinking Resort, mm. uh, because over time they released three different versions of that brochure. Mm. First it was Westcott, then it was California Adventure, and then it was California Adventure Part 2, <laughs> and each time things got smaller, there were less hotels, there were less things involved, because uh, of a wide variety of reasons. And... Uh, uh, and then another brochure I found, I did find I have the Port, the Port Disney announcement brochure. Really? That's insane. And, and now here's one for you, Disney's America. Oh my gosh. I have the brochure oh, for, I remember seeing that the shows the, the, complete, that. Keys, right? the complete layout for Disney's America. And uh, that would have been fascinating. All those things. Yeah, so so those. But but yes, Westcott. Yes, and thank you. Sometime if you, if you happen to be at an event with Tony Baxter, <laughs> just say Westcott and he will tell you about Westcott. I would love to get vomitous more. information at you. That's like my wow. dream. <laughs> it was fully planned. Yeah. So my question for you, what was the hype in terms of like what was the it thing that everybody had to do in 1990 when they went to Disneyland? Well, of course, the uh, gift giver was the big thing that they were really, really pushing. And then uh, two, uh, you know, interesting you should you say what you know what was hype. In, it, that, back then, there wasn't it's so much a, a case of like one one thing. Uh, something that I did bring along with me. This is the uh, merchandise brochure. Super cool. And there's there's all the cool stuff. This will actually be the subject of a blog post. I'm going to have a month where I don't have photos, and so I will blog this whole thing. That's amazing. And uh, the uh, <clears throat> there was uh, it was it was also one of the first times they had an enormous uh, campaign of uh, souvenirs and things. But that gift giver was such a big deal, and the fact that they gave away a car every single day. Was it the same kind of car every day? No, it was a different... Uh, like different Chevy. make and model? Or yeah, was different it... make and model every day. Or was it all Chevy? Or like... yeah, it was all, yeah, it was all... No, no, I'm sorry. It was the same, same company. It was Chevy. Okay. And, but they, they would load the car in there, and then at the appropriate time, the thing would come up, and it's a car, and Mickey would be there. Can you imagine and the if they did that again? Oh. Like, I can't imagine the mayhem. Mm-hmm. Like, you think it's crazy getting Rise of the Resistance <laughs> boarding groups. Or mm -hmm. or the sports. Katie, show off your sport real Hello. quick. Hello, my name is Katie. I have a spork. Mm. You can now get these at Docking Bay 7. fancy bag. I know I've been ranting about it for several hours, but I haven't done it on air yet. Uh, this is an elitist object. Um, it is Because I am using this with my right, right hand. hand. Right hand. And as a left-handed American. Okay, there you go. Um, How I, sinister. Yes. How dare they? So, they are 15% um, of the population. I, I would say uh, go to Disneyland.com and hit contact and That's let right. Disney very politely know of your displeasure. <laughs> or you can go and... Dear Bobbert Iker. Equally the... polite and go to Town Square and see them at City Hall. <laughs> and with your smiley face, tell them how much you'd love a left hand Allow me to begin by saying, how dare you? <laughs> All right. Anyway, we are going to wrap it up tonight. Doug, thank you so much for being here. It's oh, been very a happy to be pleasure. Here. And you think this isn't going to happen, but Cameron. Really hey, go to thegeekscorner.com. That's thegeekscorner.com. It is a website that we bought the URL for, and we host all of our website shows on there. Like this one. Things in the past that we've done in the past you can watch right now in the present. You should go to napsmagic.com. Check out all the Disney and geek news as it happens right now in the present. Also, subscribe to our mailing list and find our Patreon. 1941! And subscribe to this YouTube channel so you don't miss any of the videos that we have currently or ones that are coming up in the future. We've got a bunch coming that we have planned. And you don't want to miss them because you can see more of this craziness. But that is all the time we have for you tonight, so we will see you around the corner.